Good day. Again, this is Miss Jero, and now we're going to discuss about the supplier selection process and the legal aspect of purchasing. Alright, so in selecting the ideal supplier, it says in your module that the selection of the good supplier may vary from organization to organization. It also says there that the purchasing executive must develop criteria in a proper selection of the company's supplier as they will eventually consider them later as a partners in the business operations. So now, bakit po kailangan natin magkaroon ng criteria? Obviously because we have a lot of uh, suppliers that we can consider and those suppliers are somehow not be fitted or not be suitable for the company's needs. Uh, always uh, remember that the supplies or raw materials given by our suppliers, they are one of our assets. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, um, kung ano man yung magiging raw materials natin na manggagaling sa kanila, dapat work it yun. So, that's why we need to set some criteria. And those criteria is um, connected or it must be able to sustain the company's mission and vision. Example, if, you're, if your business uses that you have a good quality, so doon pa lang sa supplier mo, if the raw materials is, is already have a good quality, so it is easy for you to deliver the product that have also a good quality. Alright, and then, the product quality is a direct result of the production workforce and the suppliers. Ang mga suppliers po natin, they are what we call partners. Bakit po? Kasi because of their raw materials, nakakapag-manufacture tayo, nakakapag-produce tayo ng product. So that's why suppliers is definitely one of our partners. Now, in the criteria, we have some selection, no? on how to choose a good supplier. Alright, so it says in your module that the selection process of the correct supplier is one of the most important activities of purchasing department. So that's why, si purchasing department, marami siyang tinatawag na uh, choices. No, Hindi lang siya nakadepende sa isang supplier. Okay, so bakit po? Kasi, syempre, uh, as a purchasing or doon sa tinatawag natin procurement, Kapag ka nag-ganap siya ng supplier, yung criteria na yun, it must be, like what I've said kanina, it must be suited with our company's objectives. Like for example, the quality, the prices, the cost of the raw materials, okay? And even the, uh, some agreements na pwede mangyari sa ating mga supplier. So that's why, uh, purchasing department have a lot of options. No? Marami siyang pwede pagpilian dapat kung saan siya kukuha ng kanyang supplies. And uh, another thing, okay, another thing is that the executive must be able to ex uh, extensively spend their time and effort in evaluating and analyzing the credibility and capability of the supplier. So, um, when, when I was working before as a purchasing staff, uh, usually, yung mga binibili namin raw materials are came from outside the country. So, ang nagiging evaluation namin, the number one, uh, the quality of the raw materials. Number two, uh, gaano katagal or gaano katagal yung proseso bago yung product na yan mapunta sa Philippines. Number three, magkano. So, ito yung mga criteria na consider namin before dealing with our suppliers not all, not only with that even the uh, the after sales okay minsan kasi yung mga yung mga product or yung mga raw materials kapag ka na deliver na okay somehow yung mga suppliers wala na silang pake okay so we are looking for those suppliers that have an after sale support all right and then the supplier selection problem is easier to describe but difficult to implement as various consideration have to be taken before careful selection is made so this is like what i've said Karina. it must be 
definitely focus on your criteria. Why? Because these criteria are based from the company's missions and visions. Right. Next is we have the two important categories for supply evaluation. So in here, uh, we have some assessment or let's say we have some um, evaluation for us to determine who will be the suitable suppliers that we can choose. Number one is the process-based evaluation. So this evaluation is uh, one of the method on how the supplier can produce the raw materials. So dito inaalam ng buyer kung paano or how the products or how the raw materials being made. Okay, so tinitignan kung paano ginagawa from start to end. And uh, one thing, you know, kasi nagkaroon na tayo ng mga different kinds of accreditation. Okay, so um, ito po yung tinatawag natin na ISO or ISO certification. So, some of the uh, buyers, no, tinitignan nila ito. Bakit? Kasi po, if you have this kind of certification, ibig sabihin lang, pumasa ka sa international standard. Okay? When it comes to uh, proper manage of your papers, documents, and even on how you manage your operations. So, kasama yun sa tinitignan ng mga buyers. Okay? And this uh, kind of evaluation also is that to avoid some non-value added costs which can form part of price reduction. So, dito makikita natin kapag ka, uh, we visit the production of our suppliers, we can also see to it kung yung ginagamit ba nilang uh, raw materials for our raw materials have good quality and at the same time, dun pala makikita na natin na yung cost na pwede nating bayaran. Okay? And then, the next one is the performance-based evaluation. So, kanina, yung process-based evaluation is how the product being processed or how the raw materials being processed from start to end. While the performance-based evaluation is how our suppliers are being consistent and delivering good services by providing good product. So, um, the buyers is... Uh, the buyer's executive will determine the supply firm on the rela reliability to supply its component requirements. So, like what I said kanina, minsan kasi may mga supplier na kung saan, they are just good. Okay, first, second time that you order. But after that, no, kapag ka nagkaroon na kayo na tinatawag na memorandum of agreement, minsan nagkakaroon ng palya, okay, on, on delivering the supplies. So, yung performance-based evaluation naman po, ito naman po yung uh, madalas, no, ginagamit ng mga company. Okay? Uh, because this is the easier to conduct as the needed data are available in the supplier's file. On the part of the purchasing firm, it will reduce perpetual biases as the buyer will be able to measure its benchmarking system of supplier's performance and compare it to or with other possible suppliers. So, dito, sa performance-based evaluation, like I have said kanina, you will not just Pick on one supplier, dapat marami kang pwedeng pagpilian. So, those choices, makikita mo na kaagad kung sino yung mas okay when it comes to delivering their uh, services, when it comes to have a mode of payment, mga ganyan. Even the customer service that they have or the after, the after sales that they have. So, yun po ay magpo-fall sa performance-based evaluation. Again, pag sinabing process-based evaluation, it goes with the product. It deals with the raw materials. Okay? However, pag sinabi namang performance-based evaluation, it uh, reflect on how your suppliers deliver. Okay? Or the kind of services that they did just to deliver your products. And in connection with the performance-based system, we have the three kinds of method. Number one is the categorical method. So as you can see, may iba't iba tayong supplier from A, B, and C. So these are the characteristics of performance. So, so number one is the delivery or the quality rather. 
The second one is the delivery. And the third one is service. So, dito magkakaroon tayo ng tantos or let's say binibigyan natin ng grade. Okay? Or puntos. Yung mga suppliers na meron tayo. So, kung mapapansin, no, mas okay yung ating supplier letter B. Bakit? Kasi po, si letter B, ang meron siya ay dalawang good. Wala siyang, wala siyang tinatawag na unsatisfactory. Meron lang siyang neutral. Okay, so in that sense, ibig sang sabihin niyan dahil nagkaroon siya ng two positive score or two positive points uh, as a uh, purchasing or as a uh, procurement stop, pipiliin ko siya. Okay, why? Because in delivering the the raw materials is good and even the services is good. However, somehow the quality is just uh, in the average. So, in that sense, okay na sa akin si supplier B. Okay, next man is the ratio or cost ratio and the linear averaging method. So, makikita natin may mga um, cost tayo dyan. Okay, so ito yung mga cost na kung saan uh, as a uh, buyer, okay, we also need to consider this. Alright, so the cost ratio method this is commonly used by most organization or organized company as it requires mathematical analysis of the factors in delivery of materials. So, dito pa lang, malalaman na natin kung uh, magkano or let's say how will be the cost of raw materials in giving the price to our consumers. In cost ratio method also, this is how the management will analyze the internal cost associated with the quality, delivery, and even the services is converted to cost ratio, which uh, express the cost or percentage of the value of the purchases. So, the sum of the quality, delivery, and even the services are then summarized and converted into overall cost ratio and applied to the supplier's quoted price to obtain the net adjusted figures. So, may mga uh, suppliers kung saan, they give, uh, they give different kind of quotation. Siyempre, depende kung anong klaseng uh, materyales yung gusto mong i-avail, no? Kasama dun sa tinatawag natin yung cost ratio. The supplier that gets the lowers or lowest adjusted cost is chosen. So, the advantages of using the cost ratio analysis is that the company supply chain expenses are cost-based. It uh, generates savings even on a minimum percentage. On the other hand, the expenses associated with the implementation of this method are or may outweigh uh, its advantages as it requires greater data analysis. Another factor is that it uh, did not take into account the other aspect of the supplier's performance. So again, pag sinabi natin cost ratio uh, method, it deals with how much or um, it deals with the cost of the delivery, the quality, and even the services given by the suppliers. Okay, and then the third one is the linear averaging method. So dito kasi gumagamit ng statistical method or let's say the quantitative uh, method. Okay, so this kind of method um, evaluates suppliers' capabilities and reliability to supply the needed materials. The quality of the supply of materials is given the highest rate. Let's say uh, we have 50%, while the price may be given 30% and the service is 20% for the total of 100%. So parang ang nangyari sa linear averaging method, kung dito meron lang siya mga um, meron lang siya mga note, okay? When it comes to linear averaging method, may mga percentage na ito. Right? Kung baga, ito na yung pinaka nagiging criteria niya. Okay? So, the assignment of his weight is a matter of top management judgment. It may vary from organization to organization. So, yung binibigay ko kanina mga percentage, yung 50, 30, 20, so, hindi po yun nakapix. Alright? So, it really depends on the buyers. Okay? So, maybe, uh, the buyers are looking for services rather than quality or let's say it's um, another thing or or 
uh, it's another way around. So, mas okay sa kanila yung they, they prioritize quality rather than the services. So, like, like what I said, it depends on the nature of businesses. So, the primary objective of purchasing company is to provide the purchasing plant with adequate supply of the needed materials. It is therefore important that the purchasing department provides the needed quality of materials at the right time and the reasonable price. Quality, time of the delivery, and the price are the three most important factors to consider. Ulitin natin, the quality of the product and also kailan po dapat may deliver ng supplier yung raw materials na yan. Why? Why we need to consider the time of delivery? Obviously, those materials need to have another process to make it final goods. So, dun pa lang, no, sa oras pa lang o sa time pa lang nung, nung delivery nila, we also need to look at that. Okay? In choosing the suppliers also in the uh, performance-based system, the correct supplier selection is the determinants of competitive advantage. So, the companies must have a complete understanding of a present economic trend and the uh, changing innovation on the industry and the other economic factors pervading the worldwide environment of businesses. So, again, the company or the businesses, they always need to look about the, the economic status of the country and even the innovation na kailangan nilang i-consider ibig sabihin, ito po yung mga pagbabago na kung saan they need to adapt. Alright, so next is we have uh, the development of effective suppliers. So, dito the efficient resource uh, coordination and teamwork must be worked out by both the supplier and the buyer as our mutual interest of profitability hinge on the good relationship. So, obviously, ang ating supplier, like what I've said, kanina, they are our partners. Okay? So, in that sense, we work or we must need to work as a team. Why? Because both suppliers and the uh, businesses, okay, they have the mutual uh, interest, which is definitely to have or to get more profit. So, there is a growing demand for outsourcing of more suppliers rather than manufacturing the entire product as a specific, uh, specialization become more efficient and cost uh, effective. So, ngayon kasi, ang nangyayari, uh, dahil sa sobrang dami na ng nagiging uh, demand ng society natin, hindi na kayang i-provide ng isang business. So, ang ginagawa niya, pinapagawa niya ito sa iba. Okay, so, after niya ipagawa sa iba at saka niya lang ito lalagyan ng sarili niyang pangalan. So, in that sense, nagiging kanya na yung tinatawag na product. Okay, so, madalas yan sa mga shoemaker o kaya sa mga nagbibenta uh, ng mga damit, di ba? Pinapatahi lang nila yun and then lalagyan lang ng tatak. Okay, why? Kasi nga po, mas nalilaser yung kanilang gastos rather than they're the one who manufactured that product. So, the transfer of value to the supplier develop more, more or more industries. So, the economic downstream of coordination and effective relationship has grown based on the supplier and the buyer management relation that became adventures for both parties. So, the competition in the business community is putting fresh, uh, pressure in the manufacturer hand. They have to cut costs for them to stay in the business. So, that's true, no? Siyempre, kung ikaw yung business, gusto mo makamura, punta ka dun sa mas magandang, uh, mas magandang deal, no? Um, kung baga nakikipag-negotiate, kung baga nakikipag-bargaining. So, yung mga, dahil dumadami yung mga manufacturer, so they have different kind of um, uh, marketing strategy. It deals with their product, it deals with their prices and this with their services so yung mga ganun the purchases from part of the greater needs for competitive strategy so in the views of need of competitive edge over the other is the same industry the manufacturer firm must be able to develop good suppliers 
Their partnership must be able to work effectively and efficiently to sustain the competitive strategy. So these are the reasons, okay, uh, for such relationship. Number one, continuous product in, uh, improvement. So ikaw, example, si, si, si consumer mo, meron siyang gustong ipagawang upgraded. So ikaw, dahil, um, kumbaga, ikaw ilang yun naman ay nagre-retail, Okay, you need to have a connection with your suppliers. What will be the uh, more, okay, in innovative thing that you can offer to your market? Okay, laging tatandaan na si supplier, madalas sila yung mas nakakaalam kung ano po yung pwede nilang may offer sa end user. So, tayo ang ginagawa na lang natin as a middleman or one of the... Uh, so, ginagawa na, lang, ginagawa na lang natin, one of the channel is that uh, to know what will be the customer's preferences. Okay? So, next is the reduction or reducing production cost. Yeah. So, dahil, kumbaga, parang suke, suke na, diba? So, ang ginagawa natin, um, the more na magkakaroon tayo ng good relationship with our supplier, ayan, the more na nagkakaroon tayo ng ano, pagtipid or pag-save ng mga causes natin or yung mga expenses natin. Next is the improved company services. So, because of having a good relationship with our uh, suppliers, okay, even us, no, even in the end of us, nagkakaroon din tayo ng tinatawag na improved services. Okay, bakit? Kasi nga po, if the supplier already provide good services, ikaw, hindi ka na mahihirapang ibigay kung ano yung uh, needs or preferences ng customers mo. And the last one is the efficient product delivery to customer. Ito yung tinatawa, sinasabi ko kanina, the time of delivery. Okay, always keep in your mind that customers don't have much patience in waiting. So, kapag po ang supplier natin ay sumusunod sa tamang schedule kung kailan nila dapat i-deliver yun, so it's just like a domino effect to us that we can also deliver our product to our customers, okay, within the time frame. So, yun po yung nagiging uh, tulong or reasons on how we can have a good relationship with our suppliers. So, the objective could be attained by decreasing the number of reliable suppliers, keeping healthy relationship with security supply of more quality inputs into the production line. It will allow lower cost of materials as economies of scale operation in the supply chain. Pag sinabi economies of scale, ito po yung um, kumbaga bultuan. So, dahil marami kang nagawa, mas nakakatipid ka. Dahil mas marami kang uh, binibili sa supplier, mas nakakatipid ka. Yung po yung tinatawag natin na economies of scale. So, many resources and materials are becoming had harder and more expensive to purchase. So, good relationship with the supplier will guarantee that the buying firm will be the first priority in the time of crisis. Okay? So, katulong, katulong din natin dyan yung technology. Okay? Because technology will definitely help us to provide faster. Okay? In delivering our services or product to our final consumers. Next is the behavioral dimensions in supply management relations. So, number one is the counterproductive relationship. So, there are still people in the industry that take the greater advantage over the other as they are the buyer of the valued customer. On the other hand, some suppliers would take advantage over their customers in a view of the needed profit or take one of the shot opportunity because the buyer needed their materials due to, to scarce supply. So the supply organization is to focus on getting what is the best for him as a or as the supply chain dependent on him. He will take the greater advantage in view of the opportunity of the profit objective. So when the supply chain is too congested for the supplier, the buying firm will take advantage of greater supply output and would bargain for the most possible price cuts. 
order more stocks and ask for the best uh, payment terms. The buyer cut the supply chain due to heavy inventory. So both parties under this condition are working on the loss, loss relationship and should be voided. It will not create a good supplier to buyer relationship and in the long run it will be disadvantageous to both parties. So, ang sinasabi lang dyan, um, the more kasi na dumadami yung mga tinatawag natin na intermediaries, okay, the more na nagkakaroon tayo or the more na nagkakaroon ng congested supply. Okay, kumbaga, sa dami ng, uh, dami na pinagadaanan yan, ang dami mong inventary yung gagawin. Okay, so at, as much as possible, we need to we need to avoid that. Okay? Bakit? Kasi nga po, it, in the end of the day, it will have a loss-loss partnership or relationship. Okay? So, both parties, hindi sila nakinabang. Bakit? Kasi nga po, dumadami lang yung kanilang inventaryo. At hindi naman nag-move. Next is that the uh, transactional or competitive relationship. So, the parties under this condition are striving on win those relationship. The buying and the supplying parties strive to get the best arrangement possible through uh, negotiation. But to see the benefit of both parties, the negotiating parties will not stop until they are at the top of the situation without regards to other organization. It is either the supply win or the buyer loss or vice versa. This is typical situation in our local supply management. The organization that has the more bargaining power wins in the game. So the organization that is in the competitive advantage has more power over the other. The organization places themselves in the present time without regard for their future needs. There are certain situations in which transactional relationship is desirable when there are two or three com uh, competing parties of either buyers or sellers. The negotiation could be more favorable to who is less need as he can negotiate for the better terms in in terms of uh, price and other services. It must be remembered that all goods are transactional purchase unless a monopoly exists in the, uh, in the supply chain. This windows relationship is practiced by the people in the industry that's does not have a strong regard for the long time partnership either the supplier or the uh, buyer so itong transactional competitive relationship na to ito po yung uh, it's either si supplier or businesses ayaw nilang mag kumaga ayaw nilang magpalamang doon sa nangyayaring transaction okay so yun ganun lang siya yung yung transactional of co or competitive relationship so Ang, ang ang sistema lang dyan, um yung kada isa okay they do negotiation alright, para lang um mas maging favorable sa kanila yung sitwasyon alright? the next one is the corporate cooperative relationship so dito naman okay the cooperative relationship is that recognize the potential value of better supplier buyer cooperation uh, their objective is a long-term partnership in the development of better leakages. So, most of the time, itong mga uh, corporate, uh, cooperative relationship na ito, they invest, okay, more on the trust, okay? Um, minsan, yung mga partners na ito, they start from, uh, they start from the beginning. Ibig sabihin, sila pa lang yung mga businesses na kung saan nagsisimula. Okay? So, dahil nagsisimula pa lang sila, uh, some of the suppliers, tinutulungan sila na makapagsimula hanggang magkaroon sila ng um, build or, let's say, strong build relationship okay? hanggang mag-prosper yung isang businesses. Okay? So, dito, obviously, they have the so-called win-win situation. Okay, so this type of relationship are commonly found when there exists two or more competing supplier of uh, materials into supply chain. So one has to extend the necessary cooperation with the buyer in order that they will be able to hold the continuous supply of 
material. So, while strong alliance existed in the both the suppliers and the buyer, there still existed some form of competition on the part of the supplier. The uh, corporate cooperative alliances is still one thing in the development of better teamwork for both organizations in order to optimize the benefits for all those involved in the supply chain. So, like I said, Kalina, this kind of partnership is what we call a win-win situation. And the last, we have the uh, collaborative relationship. So, the greater value of cooperation and co uh, collaborative partnership between the buyer and the seller is developed when there's a system single supply firm that extends the buyer's supply chain. These two organizations are working together as a team. They develop better quality products and the supplier delivers the same at the right time at the, and also the price. It becomes advantageous to both parties and they develop cooperative alliances. The strategic partners share information on the quality improvements, even in innovation or economical data that is present in the industry. Uh, they share resources and um, the supply chain becomes beneficial to both firms. These arrangements are common in the local setting. And the other company is part of the vertical or central integration of the controlling organization. So, sa collaborative um, relationship naman, dito naman nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na um, uh, better. Or let's say, here they develop a uh, better quality of a product. Okay? And also, uh, delivers or supplier delivers the the said to, uh, the said raw materials into the right time and also into the right prices. So, dito nagkakaroon tayo ng collaboration of ideas, collaboration of ideas in terms of product, collaboration in terms of cost. So, yung po yung tinatawag natin na collaborative relationship. Next, how about the supplier management program and the development of strategic alliances? So, first, we have the supplier management program. So, as you can see, dito sa ating um, uh, graphical representation, okay, syempre nag-start lang sila when it comes to transaction. Okay, dealing products, services, into, um, into payment. Okay, and then habang tumatagal, they become partners. Okay, habang tumatagal ulit, they become strategic alliances. So, meaning, habang nagkakaroon sila ng collaborative efforts together, okay, nabubuo po yung tinatawag natin na relational. So, dito, hindi lang, it not just deal with the, kung sinong, sinong makikinabang or it's not just deal with who will have the more profit. Okay, so, Dito sa supply management program natin or the strategic alliances, it's definitely deal with the long-term partnership. Okay? So, dahil long-term partnership ito, okay, they're not just stop on one transaction. Okay? Instead, they look their suppliers or even the buyers as a partners strategically in terms of their finances, in terms of their raw materials. So, yun po yung tinatawag natin na uh, supplier management program and the development of strategical alliances. So, based on the book or based on the module that we have, the development of supplier management relation is based on the idea of efficient resource allocation and teamwork. Suppliers and buyers of the materials for production into another finished product is based with the value of specialization as the competitive market is in the direction of the competitive pricing strategy and quality. So, this significant trend is the industrial downstream calls for um, effective development or greater teamwork as a suppliers and buyers are or are partners in the product quality and price index. So, the buying organization could not survive the world of market competitive without the help and support of their supplier partner. It is a great importance to strengthen the supplier management relations 
as it uh, could be mutual interest to both parties. When the volume of purchases increase, it is important for the buyer organization to develop a few numbers of qualified suppliers uh, that will be able to supply them with quality parts and the products and, and obviously with a reasonable price. Such direction of the purchasing organization needs to develop better leakage and cooperation with uh, suitable and reliable supplier. So the supply chain management relation could not be underestimated when the buying firm is experiencing the great pressure from the buying public in the continuous supply of new and quality products. And the uh, reliable suppliers are con uh, conjured to remain the competitive edge with the other in the industry as supply will help them reduce the price of inputs, develop quality products, and develop innovations. The growing competition is uh, resulting to a greater demand in the supply chain. The buying organization must develop strong leakage with a few reliable suppliers. They must stay focused on their good relationship as the scarcity in the supply chain will affect their uh, competitive edge. Keeping this relationship in a high career will secure the buying organization with a supply of the material or quality materials. It will guarantee the greater market share in the increasing competitive business environment. So, in, uh, in deals or in terms of a strategic alliance system, the materials management department is a composition of different units that are linked together in the development of better supply chain management. The purchasing, logistic, inventory control, and production, and the processing control are very much involved in materials quality and its availability in the supply chain. These functional leakages are so important in the development of better product for growing customer demand. This functional unit must uh, develop greater alliance and work strategically with or with the supply supplier in the development of quality and affordable products. So even the selection of the supplier is the functional alliances of different um, operating units of the buyer organization. There could be a uh, changes and modification in the product mix or product design. So when the firm's direction is product, product differentiation, then the price of the materials input becomes secondary as superior quality materials is more important. So therefore, important that the supplier of input must be flexible in their supply arrangement, such as uh, flexibility needs strong leakages of communication and information on dissemination in order to avoid misunderstanding in the supply needed materials. In order to develop strategic alliances with the supplier, the following should be established. Okay. So now we have the strategic alliances in cooperation must be considered the following. Number one is the combined suppliers record of key contact partners. So the record must contain information on key management contact that could provide insight on product supply development and other key areas that are needed by the production department. It must contain the table of organization and the function of different suppliers units that have something to do with the supply management chain. This will ensure that the purchasing department is uh, acknowledgeable of all the activities of the strategic supplier that the buying firm should clearly establish expectation for the strategic supplier's future plans and development. The second one is the supplier, supplier's performance audit. Okay, so the this kind of um this kind of consideration, right? It must uh, conduct performance audit. On periodical basis, in order to determine the supplier consistency in the product quality and delivery, so the supplier must be given feedback assessment for them to know their corresponding standing in the eye of the buyer. 
So the reward system must be given to excellent suppliers through recommendation and the letter of appreciation to be awarded on special companies of page uh, of, of, uh, special company occasions like anniversary celebration. On the other hand, performance must also be communicated on the supplier on special conferences for that matter to to stretch out the problem. So, uh, new technology in the production material. So the attribute of quality products for supply to the buyers is uh, with the uh, instruction of new technology and innovation. Suppliers could not stay competitive in the supply chain management with old and outmoded production system. So the technology and innovation are important considerations to keep the buying organization to stay at the top of the competition due to changing market demand for new and better productions or products. The world market is in the range of modern equipment and facilities to keep pace to changing market demand. Next is the supplier and buyer service relationship. The buying firm should require their strategic supplier to meet or even exceed the performance of quality products and services. The suppliers must be uh, proactively initiated quality improvement system in the development of better and good quality products. So customer service should be proactive and flexible as the delivery performance is enhanced. So the most important attribute in the customer service is the delivery of quality products on time delivery and reasonable price index. It is necessary for buying organization to have a strategic buyer or supplier who understand their total cost of population, especially in the management of supply chain, as it composes the larger part of its operating uh, expenses. And the last one is the environment and the ethical standard of the strategic suppliers. So, dito, we have the government regulation, for example, in pollution, and even uh, environmental uh, degradation are great factors that will affect supplier-buyer relation. This concern of the buyers is perceived of the condition that when the supplier suddenly stops operation due to violation of environmental laws, their production will also be affected. So the ethical standard is another important factor in any buyer or supplier relations. While this is the two-way process, both the buying firms and suppliers must establish clear values of ethical practices in all their business dealings. Another thing is that the promptness in meeting and appointments are important factor for long-term relationship. So the commitment on delivery and payment must be established on highest standard of ethical values as trust and confidence lies in better management relationship. Alright, and the last one is the role of purchasing executive. So, uh, these are the people or managers or executive are one of the responsible in choosing the right suppliers. So, the purchasing is one of the most uh, intricate function in most organization. It covers tasks such as providing the business organization with the supply of raw materials, supplies and contracting services. In view of its importance and the delicate role of this involved in the procurement and storage of materials, uh, yeah, it must be handled by a responsible executive of an organization. So, uh, this kind of executive must have an authority and responsibility during that job. So, the most important task of purchasing department is in the customer relation and the development of leakage with suppliers. You represent the company in negotiation and closing of supply contract that runs to millions of pesos in company fan. So, the appointment of such corporation executive or agent must have trust and confidence of management. 
So, due to the importance of position, or the position rather, the terms agent has been uh, superseded by the title of Vice President of Purchasing in bigger organization or purchasing manager is um, uh, in the smaller company since it become an executive position, the person to be appointed to this position must have highest value of integrity and honesty. Uh, this person must uh, about 70% of corporate funds in the procurement of materials and component of its production needs. So, yung mga naupo dyan, no? uh, bakit kailangan nilang magkaroon ng charity and honesty? Because, somehow, no, in reality, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na under the table. Kumbaga, para lang mapunta yung project sa isang supplier, si supplier, ang ginagawa niya, kinakausap niya yung mga ibang agent, o let's say, yung mga purchasing manager, para eh, i-grant sa kanila yung project. Okay? So, which is, uh, that is a no-no one. Okay? Because, hindi na nagkakaroon ng mga bribes. So, kapag ka napabura mo yung supplier, nagkaroon ka. So, somehow, uh, you, tawag dito, you did not consider no the quality or yung magagastos nung businesses kung saan ka nagtatumaw. Alright, so again, thank you so much for listening. If you have any question, just DM me. Thank you so much.